Lolo Knows is a motivational talk show that showcases talented DJs and folks from every walk of life that has a message of life to share through music, wine, and great talk. Welcome to the Lolo Knows Radio Show. I am your host, Lolo. I am here at the Rock Bar here in the flats of Cleveland. And I am sitting here with one of my special guests tonight doing an exclusive in- interview on Anthony Italia. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm wonderful. I like how you pronounce my last name, Italia, because when I go to Spain, that's what they all say. It's instead of Atala. I hear my name, Ataya, Anthony, Ataya. Yeah, so. it is, because, you know, you they L, yeah, I am. So, yeah, you, you go. see the two L's and yeah, you say, I, I, yeah, yep, I, yeah, exactly. Yes. Moving on. <laughs> let's talk about, let's just talk about your, first of all, let's talk about your early years in DJing, you know, tell me how you got started. Tell me, you know, what led you to this point to take it to this level man that's how much time do we got go, go. <laughs> we had so go. much time uh it's a long it's a really long story it actually all started here though that's why this is such a nostalgic gig because uh i was you know i went to school i was in the corporate world i was um you know doing advertising for at&t but a lot of the guys in the room here that are with me tonight my good friends they were the ones that i was first regurgitating my love for electronic music on we were all in university and i was like you know pushing all of this music onto them because i had older brothers and sisters that turned me onto this music and you know they all got hooked and we all ended up going to raves and it, it was just a hobby initially and um you know when i got into the corporate world some people had things that they like to do some people played golf some people did this i just started to pick up djing so right. one thing led to another. I started passing out my mix CDs to different friends of mine, and I had my first gig ever here in Cleveland because I grew up here. Right. So I knew people that owned the clubs here back. There was a period of time that we were actually all just talking about on the cab right over here where Cleveland actually had six, seven clubs that all played electronic music, yeah. like from the late 90s until like 2004, 2005. So 98, 99 to 2004, 2005, there was Wish, Spy, Groovy oh Little Nightclub. God. Aqua. Oh, they were all like, awesome places. Yeah, they were all they were all the original places. And Cleveland, not that it's not now, but Cleveland was like super super hip. And I yep. I caught it at, at at a time where I needed it the most because the only place I knew anyone or had any political connections was here. And I got a couple opportunities to play at Spy, and then at Cloud Nine, and one thing led to another. And um, you know, I started getting. Uh, booked here, Detroit, Chicago, Toronto. I used to call it the, the Lake Erie Circle Tour. The Lake because, Erie yeah, Circle seriously, because I used to go around Lake Erie and then occasionally go to Chicago. But uh, uh, it all kind of came to a head while I was doing really well with my job. And um, in 2007, you know, I moonlighted for three, four years where I was a corporate suit um, during the week. And then I was DJing in clubs during the weekend. It was a complete enigma of a life. The one thing I want to just, I've noticed right away when you picked up, okay, and maybe a lot of people don't get get that, you're an art, you know, you, you, you were from the corporate world, but you were an artist initially, you know, sometimes as artists, you know, we don't have always that business sense ahead, right. and it seems like you have a really good combination of it, well, and there's a nice little balance yeah. in how you were able to take something that you gravitated towards and right. loved, and was able, though, to make a business out of it and this is what you're doing well when i uh when i got um the first my first booking at uh, winter music conference in march of 2007 nice. was when i had a conversation with my parents and they're actually the ones that pushed me to quit my job and do this full time and whoa that's awesome <clears throat> but we talked about it very um you know in a very strategic uh point of view And how are we going to manifest my dream? And we all talked about it collectively. And they told me, they said, you know, 
you've done well in the corporate world, you've got a great education, you can always go back, but your competitive advantage is the fact that you have this business sense and have this education. That you, yes. you have the talent, why don't you apply the things that you learned in the business world, you know, into the um, into the music world. And I told him, you know, in order for me to do this, I have to start making my own music instead of playing everyone else's music. And so that was kind of like the big turning point. April 2007 is when I quit my job and did this full time. So Was there, um, I mean... Was there even just like even just a hesitation just because, you know, coming from like corporate America, you know, it's so it's so nine to five, you know, it's so regimented. It's so this. And when you get into like the artistic realm of things, it's like and I'm an artist, you know, I'm a visual artist and I get it. You know, you have you know, there's there has to be that fine balance. But I'm also a businesswoman by day. You know, I run a, a mobile spa business, and that's what I do during the day while I'm doing all of this other stuff. But it's amazing how you're able to, like, jump from that to that, but then you have to put on that that regimented corporate head but still be the artist, you know what I mean, and make sense of it. Does that even make sense to you? It does. I mean, um, you know, at the time, I, if I were to look back retrospectively now on – the journey that I have embarked upon in the last, you know, seven, eight years of my life, um, I would be like, holy shit, I wouldn't probably have known the roller coaster that I would have gone on. And not necessarily that that would have scared me away, but I think at the time that I quit, um, ignorance was bliss. I was maybe overly confident in my talent level at the time. I mean, I look back on how talented I was then compared to, comparatively speaking to what I've learned now, and I realize there's such a huge gap uh, and I naturally, you know, because how far I've come. But the thing is, is that at the time I was almost so ignorant that it was perfect for me to be that ignorant because it gave me an unabashed horse with the blinders on focus that I was going to become one of the biggest artists in the world. And I'm still not there yet. I'm still scratching and clawing and trying to hit that upper echelon. And I feel like I'm almost there. But at the time, it didn't seem like it was such a pot of, the, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It seemed like it was right there. I didn't really learn how much I needed to do and, and what I needed to accomplish until I was already all my chips on the table and in it. And at that time, it was too late. It was too late for turning back. And I have too much competitive spirit and too much pride to turn back around. So I'm almost glad that I was almost a little bit um, kind of stupid to really the effort and the amount of energy and time and dedication that I would have to put into it. It was actually perfect to be that way in a really weird way. You know, I think that's awesome. You know, I mean, I listened to some of your music just recently. I listened to Sir and I listened to Daydream and then I'm comparing that with Lonely and all these, you know, your, your style reflects you even just I'm trying to gauge you as an artist even just in your music and just going through the process there's a journey Absolutely. that you there's a process and I feel the journey from beginning to end and the, the climax there's like a romanticism but then there's like some there's some there dark mo right and I, I you know and I feel that and I like the fact that you can mix between the dark moments and even with those melodic you know, in between, which actually gives it a nice flow every time. And I think that that's what you're, as an artist, outside of the business, is what's making, let's, let's focus on you being the artist, even though you're a good businessman. You're an artist to me first. Because then you're, you know, that's where you're gauging people. You know, they don't, they don't know Anthony Italia as the, you know, artist you know as the as the business guy they know you as the artist who moves them when they hear your music so even just for me in retrospect even listening or trying to even gauge to even get to know you i have to listen to your music and that's why we are sitting here and it's it's a great opportunity that you're giving me to sit here with you to talk to you even about your artistry that's what a lot of my show is all about just I want you to tell people out there, you know, who are on this journey, because, you know, this is a very competitive field. You know, where, if they're real serious about it, what advice would you give anybody? Well, <clears throat> I mean, that's... I mean, you come <clears throat> from Cleveland, me. then you made the move where? To Detroit. To Detroit. Now I live in Chicago. Now yeah. you live in Chicago. I mean, it's, uh, to be honest, it's not any one thing. I, 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 to be honest, this question I get asked a lot from fellow artists and peers and you know, how did you get to where you got? And there's really no, 
uh, compartmentalized formula. It's not two plus two equals four. It's much more synergetic than that. It's more one plus one equals three. It, it, you have to be, first of all, completely obsessed. I mean, literally obsessed. If you want to be great at anything in life, whether it, you're being... You know, you're going to be a trash man or you're going to be a rocket scientist. You have to be completely obsessed with what you do. There can't be <clears throat> any, I'm going to do this part of the time. And that's why I had to quit my job is because I had to divulge all of my energy and all of my focus into this. And it really comes down to recognizing your talent, recognizing what you're good at, recognizing what you're not good at, being incredibly um, humble. You have to have a, a nice dose of humility. Yes. Um, Combined with, you know, your focus and what you're doing. And the thing is, is that you have to not give up. You know, our industry, like you said, it's incredibly competitive. It's, it's also a battle of attrition. There are so many artists that I know that have quit along the way. And uh, there's a great saying that I read a few times. And it says a lot of people that quit didn't know how close they were to their dreams, you know, they know until I, they quit. I always get to that point, you know, even with anything that I'm doing in life. You know, it's like that is a true statement, and that's when you don't want to quit, and especially when it just kind of reflects back in your head, should I or shouldn't I? Just don't. If you really, really want to do this, and if you're really passionate enough, if you really love what you're doing, then you should never quit. You should do it because you just love to do it, right? Well, I think that there are outside forces that cause people to quit, you know, uh, family, obligations, responsibility, money especially. You know, I, I, I completely understand uh, but the thing is, is that uh, you also have to have a plan. I think that the one of the biggest issues facing today's generation, as I call them, the instant gratification generation, <laughs> is that if you can't if you can't tweet it, Instagram it, Snapchat it, Facebook it, download it, then every a lot of people lose focus. It's a whole generation of people that seemingly have ADD. Um, unfortunately, my it all comes back to my parenting. I have to give everything to my parents. They instilled a lot of uh, wonderful. Uh, goals and kind of the blueprint for success within me and they you know, they taught me that it's a lot about your long-term goals it's not about where you are today or tomorrow it's about where you where do you want to be in six months where do you want to be in 18 months where do you want to be in three years yes. and, and put together a plan and put together you know a, a clear set of goals that you want to accomplish at certain dates and you really have to write them down and put them on your mirror and put them in front of you day to day. So you're constantly seeing them and you're constantly trying to achieve. Otherwise, these goals will become fleeting and they'll just get lost in the everyday nuances of life. And if you don't have these things staring at you in the eye and, you know, basically putting the pressure on you to achieve and to cross certain thresholds in your life goals, then, you know, a lot of the time you should just kind of forget what you're even doing it for. So. Well, let me, t let's talk about incorrect. Tell me about the label. Tell me, you know, I, I see a very nice artist roster. I also see that you have some heavy duty tracks that have topped on B port and billboard and everything else through these individual artists. I mean, what does it take for you to recognize or bring an artist to your label? What do they have to have? I mean, talent first. I mean, it really comes down to that. And it's all, you know, it's my personal preference. I, I've turned, I've uh, turned down several tracks that were great tracks that just weren't right, you know. Uh, you have to have a, a, certain, a certain motif or mantra that's going to speak to your target audience. You have to, first of all, recognize your target audience. You cannot be all things to all people. Right. You have to recognize what your target audience is, and then you have to supply the product for that target audience that they're going, that's going to be easily digestible. And so, uh, you know, what it comes down to is it comes down to talent. It also comes down to personality. I'm very, very big on you know, spirituality and the vibe of an individual. Yeah. I've met a lot of egotistical individuals that had talent <laughs> exuding from their pores. <clears throat> and I didn't want to work with them just because I'm not that kind of a person. And so, you know, I run my business in a, in a very ethereal way. A lot of the individuals that are on my label are from different countries. 95% of the artists on my roster are, from, are international. And we all have created a beautiful network of musicians, but people that take their job seriously, that you know, have a good head on their shoulders, and we all help each other out. We all play on each other's parties all over the world. So, I mean, it is, it is, it is political. It is a little bit um, of a kind of a, a tight-knit family. Instead of trying to, like, spray my sawed-off shot shot shotgun all over the place, I like to pick a couple individuals that I continually work with. But then I'm also into cultivating new artists. I've cultivated 
uh, multiple artists that nobody had ever heard of. Uh, these uh, this Italian duo, Kubico, nobody had ever heard of them, and one of their tracks went top ten on Beatport, and this next track that's coming out, everyone's playing it. So I'm into cultivating new artists, but I'm also into creating your... You know, in this industry, it's all about, and I don't mean this in a vindictive or malicious way, but it's also about your gang. It's about formulating your gang yep. and your crew of I, guys I, and you guys all working together. I, I agree because, you know, even even now with even just me just developing the show and over the time, you know, I have really noticed that it all boiled down to that. The people that I was going to surround myself with, that were going to, you know, really be able to take this to the next level. And I'm very blessed that I have a nice network of friends who've become family to me, you know, or like the family, like you guys are his family. You know, and I'm surrounded by people that you love and that you respect, that you have been going through this journey with. And you have to have that because you have to have something for yourself, especially before it goes to it gets too nutty and crazy. And, you know, you need to have those loyal ones by your side. And it's so important. They are very hard to find. But, you know, I always kind of leave it. I have learned to just stop and just kind of let go and just let it happen. You know, and and it, the right people always seem to show up at the right time when I'm not ever thinking about it, when I'm not overthinking it, when I'm just relaxed in the whole process, and they're just right there. They're actually right under your nose. I just love that. You know, and it's awesome that you have this. Now you're you're going to be playing with Mr. Sheridan over here. Pay attention, Dustin. Dustin, I am, a, you know, I've been listening to a lot of your music, you know, a lot of the mixes, especially the one you just, you did at Burning Man, you did, you know, I mean, I've been listening to a lot of different stuff from you. I love um, your, you, you have this, this flow and it's, it's deep. It starts very deep and it, yeah, deep and sexy. You, you bring in a little bit of that funky, that melodic. I love it. Okay, so I do want to do take a few minutes to talk with you, if you don't mind, Mr. Dustin Sheridan. How are you? Hello, I'm great. How are you? I'm awesome. Okay, so let's talk for a few minutes. I do want to talk about um, you have this new thing coming up with um, Gene Ferris, Soul Tech. Tell me about it. Well, um, Gene is a legend in Chicago. Yeah, as you know. yes, he is. And he's uh, on top of his game right now. He's really killing it. Um, he heard me at After Hours one time, um, and he was like, damn, white boy, who are you? <laughs> you know? So um, he really liked me, and then, uh, you know, we connected um, here and there. And then we started playing a lot of gigs together, and we just, you know, we, our, our chemistry was really good because he was like the soul, you know. He was the, you know, the old school kind of. Okay deep house and then i was you know the new school kind of tech so we did the soul tech you so that's how we came. you haven't really dj for a long period of time um this is like my fourth going on fifth year yeah you know a lot of people put this emphasis like on time but you know it's like it's not even a time issue you know and i know i know incredible djs that have um dj's for like 20 plus years to djs that are just really just starting out that just have that natural ability they have that natural gift when did you realize you had this and this is what you wanted to pursue well i mean who inspired is you know anthony's a huge inspiration i mean obviously he's, you know we lived together for a while and I had, <laughs> I, had, I had the privilege of uh, living with him for a few years yes. so he you know definitely him um my best friend garrett uh, back in chicago he um he was very big in the teen clubs you know so i was always like his wingman nice. and then you know we'd always go back you know, for after hours at the house, and that's when I started playing with music, and okay. that's that's I was kind of like born into after hours. Okay, so, nice. And then we'd always go to like WMC and all this stuff. So like Santa Kleinerberg was really an inspiration on me. You know, you know everyone in Chicago like Bad Boy Bill. You know the old school house. Well, you have played in all the big name clubs in Chicago, and you continue to and stuff. When did you notice that this was really just this was taking you to like festivals? You did Burning Man. What else? What's going on? Well, you know, this is what I love to do. You know, I had my I had my own business for a while, and, and I just wasn't happy with it. Like music really made me happy. Um, so I, like I, you know, started out just playing around with that in after hours, and then I just, you know, kind of got my own decks, and then I just, you know, when I first got my stuff, my mom's like, you know, don't get that stuff. You're gonna be wasting your money, you know. So it was pretty funny. Like last last Easter, I was like, hey, mom, you said I was wasting my money on all that stuff. <laughs> um, 
Did you have a really good support system? Yeah, of course. You know, all my friends were, you know, into music, so I was just like, you know, around it, like all the time. Like, you know, we started in our room. You had Anthony. Absolutely. You know, that's a, that, that guy is not bad to have in your corner, considering the fact that he, not only is he talented, but he also had, he's a machine. He, he, he has his business sense on, and he's going for it. There's no, there's, my mother always said to me growing up, she said, if you were ever going to do something. And I love Dustin Sheridan so yeah. much. <laughs> if you were ever going to do anything in life, I don't care what it is, you got to do it 100% or you do it nothing at all. You don't do it anything at all. If you're going below 100%, then don't do it. Just don't. From the second this guy wakes up, yeah. he's 200%. <laughs> he's 200%? I see that. Even just, you know, just even in the branding sense, you know, even just in the image sense and what you want your image and your brand to even say about you. How important is that, Anthony? While you're making your drink? Well, <laughs> low, low. We're in the drink in the green room. In the middle of the drink. Oh, God. That's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm multifaceted and DJ. I can yes. do two things at the same time. Yes. Think multitask. Uh, yes. No, honestly, the branding part is uh, is so important. Uh, what I is what was what I was going back to before is one of the things that I saw as a competitive advantage to you know being in this industry is that I was able to have not only a you know a great education but also real world experience with with marketing and advertising and branding and you know with everything that I do with my label it is meticulously gone over with a fine tooth comb my uh the the logo is designed and it's timeless i just had a conversation with someone today that was saying you know we love to wear your apparel because it's our the most comfortable shirt i have you know so all the r&d going into the apparel uh the logo is timeless uh it's three prime colors it's nothing fad or like of the day it's something that is going to look good five years ago or five years forward so the marketing and the branding is very very important uh I talked to an individual yesterday and they're starting a new business and they were stressing about how they needed to get their logo and get their marketing plan out quickly. And I said, the worst thing that you can do is rush the initial marketing plan that you push out because it is 10 times harder to re-educate someone off a stimulus that you've already given them rather than give them the stimulus that you actually want them to see the right. first time through. And so everything that you do as far as, you know, how you brand yourself, your sound, the productions that you put out, a lot of, I've given a lot of advice to new producers and said, don't release the first 20 tracks that you make because 10 years from now, you're going to wish those tracks never came out. <laughs> and the, you know what? That is actually really good advice. And, and the, it's, but it's true because when you first make those tracks, you think it's, I call it the high school book report theory. The high we've school all, book report theory. it's true. We've all, we've all crammed and done a book report or an exam paper the night before it was due and when we were finished we thought it was Shakespeare and we got back the we got back we got back a grade and it was a C and we couldn't believe that that teacher gave us the C we're like how could you this is brilliant and the thing is because you never allowed individuals to give you constructive criticism based on what you did and so with your tracks with your branding with your imagery with everything that you do instead of allowing it to be emotional it should be much more um, much more denotative much more quantitative it should be much more mathematic you should allow other individuals to judge you and give you criticism based off of how they view it, not off how they want you to respond to the stimulus that you're providing them. And then you have to not have an ego and, and from a humility standpoint, absorb the information that they're giving to you and allow that to conceptualize your end product. And most people are so rushed to get something out because they're too excited instead of allowing themselves to sit and marinate that on it for a while. That is so true. Oh my gosh. Like, and I, I'm going to say this. Even just as a visual artist, you know, I'm very detailed with my work. If I'm not feeling it, I'm not putting it out there in the world. If I even feel half-hearted on it, I'm not putting it out there in the world. You know, even if there's a, even an inkling where you, you'll know when you have, you know when you'll have the right product because you're going to feel it yourself. And that's going to be so, uh, like a, a story about yourself that you put out there into the world. And if it's not that then don't put it out there. Don't just do it because somebody else has done it. You know, and there's, aren't there just so many people out there just doing the copycat thing these days and you just kind of think. That's 
a metaphor for life in general, though. Most people are, are going through the motions and doing things that other people think that they should be do- think that they should be doing instead of breaking the chain and doing what they they, they want to do themselves. I mean, it takes a strong individual to go against the grain and do something because it makes them happy rather than because it makes everybody else happy. Right. And so it goes it goes in with your music, it goes in with your life choices, it goes in with your career choices. It's a fundamental fundamental principle that we all have to follow and it's a difficult decision to make but those of us that make that difficult decision and actually break the break the vicious cycle are the ones that end up being the happiest in the long run so how do you feel oh he pretty much he pretty much he pretty much na- he pretty much nailed it <laughs> Well, that's yeah. That's 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 the phase I'm in right now is uh, work, work, working on my sound, you know. So yes. that's all. That's that's the only thing that's coming up for me is just working on you know my own sound and you know the soul tech. You know that's you blowing up. It's already in you to do it. Yeah, I always say, and this is the other thing. I think any person that goes into production in any art form, you got to you got to dig from within. You just got to go with those emotions. Even maybe the ugliest of emotions you might even be faced with, that's where your real that's where your grit and that's where the real stuff comes from. So in any in any I mean, just in my advice just to you, just as an artist, just go from within. You know, any emotion whether I mean Sometimes I even feel like I mean, that's what I'm doing. That's really what... happy. If you're very grateful, come from that place. If you're feel, feeling some kind of way about something else or you're feeling sad about something, go from that place. Yeah. But you can't go wrong with any of your emotions, and especially when it goes into your music. Oh, exactly. You know? yeah. I'm really happy I got to talk with you guys. This is awesome. <laughs> Are you guys enjoying this interview? <laughs> I got like a whole audience around me. It's so amazing. I'm really loving this. We're getting ready to have Anthony and Dustin take the stage here in a few moments. But I really am very happy that you guys have met with me. Anthony, come here. I want to... <laughs> so tell me. Give me the rest of your year. Give me your rest of your year. What are you doing? Uh, rest of 2015. Um, you just want me to run down the list? Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Just some of the top I'm stuff. playing at closing parties in Ibiza next week, and then going to Amsterdam for Amsterdam Dance Event, then doing Groove Cruise LA, then doing Halloween in Chicago, then Greece, then Italy, then Australia, then Thailand, San Francisco, um, and then doing a couple shows here and there um, in some random cities like Austin and Atlanta. I was playing Space Terrace in Miami on November 21st. And yeah, that's about. I think that's about. It. I'm, I think it's pretty impressive. You remembered your schedule. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome! Talk about being on point. What about you, Dustin? Um, not not so much of that, but um, just in Chicago, we got uh, coming up Halloween weekend with uh, party with Anthony Friday, and then Saturday we're doing Soul Tech at Soundbar. Which uh, that's Halloween night, and then uh, Freaky Deaky party. That's at Toyota Park. That's with uh, me. Um, Richie Hutton, uh, Dubfire, P. Tong, uh, Joris Vorm. So looking forward to that weekend. Awesome. All right. Well, they're getting ready to take the stage now. Um, I am going to be back with Lola Nose.
summer's night in Chicago. A friend is on the phone asking me what's going on. She says it's time for me to do something new. I don't got a problem with that. We're gonna meet up on the north side. Have a drink or two, talk a bit, get ourselves loosened up. Cause after that we're going to a club. She had plans on getting down. The club was called Red Dog. It's where house music lived. Chicago's house of house. Where you can be what you want to be. House music. Be what you want to be.
everyone. Welcome back to Lolo Knows. You would have just listened to two mixes that I incorporated into this show. First mix was Anthony Italia, Core Volume 10, Continuous DJ Mix, Incorrect Music. That actually is a free download, guys, and you can get it on his SoundCloud at Anthony Italia. Also... The second mix that I put on the show is from Dustin Sheridan. It was his 101.1 FM electric playground mix that you can also get on SoundCloud at Dustin Sheridan. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this show. I was really happy to have done that show, and it was such a joy being able to spend time with two such great talents that are just rising stars in the whole dance music scene. I'm very happy that I had the privilege to be able to interview them here in my hometown. Well, until next week, I do have my friend coming back into town to rock out Barley House next Saturday night, and that is Stonebridge. So stay tuned for next week's interview with him. Take care, everybody, and have a wonderful evening. Bye for now.